Oh, Dembele, brilliant from Dembele. Crosses this one into Felipe Coutinho for his hat-trick. And off the crossbar, Coutinho gets himself the hat-trick. Now on his right foot, goes for the finesse shot and he actually scores. Juan Insua most definitely has one of the best finesse shots in the game. Hey guys, how is it going? It is S2G and welcome back to another episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series. Today's episode, we should be getting done with the month of December and heading into January, which of course is super exciting because we should be in the January transfer window by the end of today's episode, which as I just said, I am super excited about because we are definitely going to be making a few transfers in this series. So if you guys have any transfer suggestions for the team, make sure to put them down in the comments comment section below but that is not all we've got some crucial La Liga games coming up and also pretty much a must win Champions League game against Napoli to decide who's going to go through to of course the round of 16 as potentially group winners of course but it's not that if we lose the game against Napoli we could be heading out of the Champions League so we are in a very peculiar position so this one's definitely going to be an exciting episode with a lot of drama. So if you guys are hyped for today's episode, make sure to show your support by dropping a like on the video. You guys continue to smash out the like targets I give you guys. So let's see if you guys can do it again. 600 likes, that would be awesome. And if you're watching my content for the very first time, do subscribe for more FIFA 19 videos. We always start off the episodes with a press conference. So let's get right into this one. First question, do you think Messi or Ronaldo will win the Ballon d'Or again in real life? Absolutely, I feel like next season or the next Ballon d'Or is definitely going to go to either Leo Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. My bet's on Messi because I really feel like Barcelona are going to win the Champions League this season. But at the same time, Juventus have been great. So I think it's basically going to be whoever wins the Champions League, the player from that team gets the Ballon d'Or. And I think it's going to be the Barcelona or Juventus to win the Champions League. We'll see what happens, but I'm sure Messi or Ronaldo will win the Ballon d'Or again in real life at least once or maybe even twice. Next question, what do you think about Ricky Puig's debut against Leonessa? Honestly, I was so happy with the way he performed. He was actually really good, got himself an assist for one of Denis Suarez's goals. And also, I think he was the most fouled player on the pitch in that game. So it just shows that he wants the ball. He wants to move around with the ball, play passes and just wants to be involved more. And that is perfect for a Barcelona midfielder. I honestly loved his debut and I can't wait to see him in action once again. Next question, from your experience, whose left foot is better? Messi? or Dybala's 100% Leo Messi. There's just something about Leo Messi's left foot in this game. Most of his shots go into the back of the net. I know Dybala scores a ton of goals as well, but Leo Messi at his prime when he was like 93-94 rated, his left foot was just insane scoring a shit ton of goals for us. So most definitely Leo Messi's left foot is better than Paolo Dybala's. And that is it guys for today's press conference. Again, if you guys have any questions, make sure to put them down in the comment section below. You guys voted for Felipe Coutinho for the player of the episode award. It was a tough vote between Coutinho and Juan Insua. Both the players scored a hat-trick, but I feel overall Coutinho had more involvement in the episode. He performed well in two games and I guess that is why you guys voted for the Brazilian and hence he wins the player of the episode award. Because of the fact that next episode we'll be heading into the transfer market to make signings, I wanted to discuss a few potential transfers that we could make. Replacing Koulibaly is an option. It seems like quite a few of you guys wouldn't mind me replacing Koulibaly for someone like Davinson Sanchez or something like that. I feel like that's a very good option. We'll see what to do about that in the next episode. Again, keep letting me know your suggestions in the comments section. Another transfer suggestion I've seen is to get rid of Joshua Kimmich. Yes, I know he's a great player, but he just hasn't worked as well as maybe someone like Nelson Semedo has in that right back role. So maybe selling him and bringing in Jao Cancelo or someone who would, you know, really fit into the team because of that extra pace. So there are a lot of options. There are a lot of things that we could do, but I need your input. So do let me know with your suggestions. But for now, I think a centre-back and a right-back are transfer suggestions that I'm really clinging on to. At least for now, it could change with your input. Now we've got a quick season goals update. Last episode, we made tremendous progress with our season goals and I'm hoping we can continue to do that. A few assists from Felipe Coutinho would be massive and also if we could, you know, finish off the future is bright challenge, that'd be pretty awesome as well. Just one goal or assist needed from the Youth Academy players. Now, we've already completed the Hattrick Heroes challenge 
absolutely fantastic. Now we just need Zabala to add to his goal tally to, you know, help us complete the replacing Messi challenge as well. Ricky Puig is already up to an 80 rating, so yeah, we're also making progress on the next Iniesta challenge as well. Because of a few dislocated shoulders and the fact that we've got a big game coming up in the Champions League against Napoli very soon, I've gone with a change to lineup. I've made a few changes. A few of the backup players like, you know, Miranda, Abel Ruiz also getting an opportunity so that, you know, the first team can be fit for that Napoli game. And also, Juan in is on the bench for this one he's not quite fully fit for this game but in the second half I'm definitely gonna be bringing him on so we've got a strong lineup let's go ahead and get the three points Malcolm playing in camp for the first time I think in his career here at Barca it might be Malcolm with the chance strikes it so well what a goal from Malcolm he's literally playing in a completely new position for the first time in this series and he scored a belter of a goal what a strike that was from the Brazilian Carlos Delenia picks up the assist for that one and Barcelona take the lead against Alaves take a look at that strike though Alenia lays it off to Malcolm who just slams that in Fabulous finish from Malcolm. Finds Artur. Sees Miranda. Miranda strikes this one. Big save from Pacheco. We are playing some great football so far. This could easily be 3 or 4 nil in under 30 minutes. We've been kind of dodgy in terms of our finishing. Quickly releases it off to Malcolm. Malcolm. Now to Iñaki Williams. What a chance for Williams to score. And he has scored even though the keeper got a touch to it. Brilliant finish from Iñaki Williams. And again, great passing between Abel Ruiz and Malcolm. And of course, Iñaki Williams. Malcolm gets himself an assist as well now. He's having a really good game. Barcelona leading 2-0 against Alaves. Take a look at that again for the pass from Malcolm. Perfect as well. What was Pacheco doing there? I mean, what kind of keeping is that? But anyways, 2-0 Barca. That is full time. Three points in the bag. A very good performance. And this is the kind of performance we need before that game against Napoli. And the players delivered. Really impressive games from Malcolm and even Alenia. But overall... Great performance, three points in the bag. So Malcolm has picked up a knock. I don't know what's up with players and their shoulders. I mean, another injury and this time again the shoulder. Thankfully, it's a bruised shoulder and not a dislocated one. So he'll be out for the next five days. At the start of the episode, we were talking about potentially bringing in a centre-back. It looks like we do have a centre-back in the academy. Esteban Granero seems like a solid centre-back. I know he's a left-back in the game, but look at these stats. Six foot six, first of all, is immense. He seems pretty quick as well, and it's definitely going to increase as years go on. He's got great jumping, great strength, decent stamina. Look at that 92 aggression. And he's got decent tackling stats as well for his age and overall. So I feel like maybe if we promote him to the first team, we can use him and develop him as one of our centre-backs. That could be a solid option. On the other hand, even a Placido Oriana seems like a decent centre-back. Both of them are full-backs, but they're mostly kind of like centre-backs. So maybe that's an option instead of signing a centre-back. Basically, using the Youth Academy to, you know, make a signing instead of, you know, the traditional way. We continue to keep our 8-point lead in La Liga intact, which is fabulous. 8 points over Valencia, 11 points over Real Madrid and 12 points over Athletic Club. La Liga is going fantastic for us. Let's see the teams in the relegation zone. Oh my, Atletico in 12th. That wasn't expected. Real Oviedo, Leganes and Eibar in the relegation zone. But the thing that interests me now is the Champions League because we are, as I said previously in the video, in a peculiar position because anything can happen in this group. A draw, I think, would send us both to the next round of the Champions League. But at the same time, if we somehow lose to Napoli, Napoli and Sporting could go through to the next round. So we haven't secured our future in this competition yet. So it's a big game against Napoli and I'm really hoping we can beat them it is away from home which is something that scares me but yeah we've got a solid team and i believe in the team i hope we can get the job done and hopefully also finish first in our group this is going to be a massive game grimaldo's injury has certainly caused us problems because now we are forced to play cucurella whose future at barcelona is currently uncertain so I'm not sure if it's the right move, but with Grimaldo injured, Miranda not fully fit, I think Cucurella is the only option to play as our left back. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing. The rest of the team is pretty solid. All the first team players taking part in this one. We're sticking with the 4-3-3 attack formation for this game, which we normally use in the big games. Zabala playing in Cam, Icardi, Coutinho, Dembele all starting. Umtiti delicted at the back to Stegen captaining the side. This is a side that should get us to win. Let's get right into this one again. Against Napoli in the Champions League away from home. This could well be our biggest game of the season so far. Wow guys, this looks actually so good. Maradona's image. 
held by the Napoli fans to appreciate what he's done for the club. But we're not here for that. We're here to beat Napoli and get ourselves qualification to the next round of the Champions League. The anthem is on now and this is it guys. One of the biggest Champions League games of the season for us. Icardi returns to Italy to play against one of his arch rivals at the time when he was at Inter. Napoli of course. This is it. One of the biggest games for us. We've got to win guys. We've absolutely got to win this one. Now here's Paolo Dybala, the former Juventus player with a chance to score early on and Paolo Dybala converts and Barcelona get the early lead. It's again a finesse shot from the master himself, Paolo Dybala, who's really mastered the finesse techniques. I guess he's been watching Messi at Barcelona in this series and there you go, he converts. I think it was Nelson Smedo who gets the assist for that one, but that was a fabulous finish there from Paolo Dybala. 1-0 against Napoli. We need this result, guys, and our players are delivering it. Here we go, Felipe Coutinho with a chance to maybe strike this one in. Butland? What's Butland doing in, of course, um, in the Napoli? That's such a weird transfer seeing the Englishman play for the Italian side. Well, Coutinho almost scored there. I see Pogba making the run. Pogba has made the run. Pogba cutting this one back to Dembele, who chips this one to Felipe Coutinho, who strikes it first time. He should have just gone with a power shot instead of the finesse shot. Butland with a solid save. So far, Butland is keeping Napoli in the game. We are playing some great football. Back to Dybala. Here we go again. Another chance for potentially Dybala to score, but Butland with another save. Normally, those go in, so... Butland is having an extraordinary game here, which is a bit frustrating, but so far, I'm okay with it because the scoreline is 1-0 to our favour. Here's Dembele. Back to Mauro Icardi, what a chance this is, he cuts it back to Paolo Dybala unselfishly and Dybala converts without much of a problem. We've finally beaten Jack Butland for the second time in this game and the goal comes from none other than Paolo Dybala with a great finish. Dembele finding Mauro Icardi, who unselfishly cuts this one back to Dybala and there you go, 2-0 Barcelona. Still Dybala out wide to Felipe Coutinho. Coutinho whips in the cross to Mauro Icardi. Oh, what a header from Icardi. That's one of the best headers I've scored in FIFA 19. How did he jump above the defender there? And also, it's an assist for Coutinho, which is big for us. But I want to take a look at that goal again. Dybala again playing it out wide to Coutinho. Cuts inside. Fantastic cross. Look at that for a leap from Icardi. That's a fabulous header from the Argentine. There you have it, guys. What a win for us. 3-0 against Napoli. This must be our best Champions League performance so far this season. Yes, we beat the Swedish side AIK 6-0. But this one against Napoli away from home, getting such a result is a massive confidence booster because so far this season in the Champions League, we haven't really been that great. But we do secure top spot in our Champions League group, which I'm extremely proud of. So can't wait to find out who we'll be facing in the next round of this competition. And also a quick shout out to Cucurella, who was really decent in this game. With Ricky Puig injured, I've just gone ahead and put in Juan Insua for another training session, at least until Ricky Puig is back from his injury. And I really want Juan Insua to get as high as possible in terms of his overall. So it just makes sense for me to do that. So I'm really hoping by the end of this season, he will be around 74, 75 rated. He's certainly performing like a player of like 80, 82 overall. He's that good, guys. So I can't wait him to increase in his overall. Okay, guys, this is actually insane. For the first time in this series, a player apart from Leo Messi has won the Ballon d'Or and it's Mauro Icardi. Wow, that is so impressive. He's been really good this season and also helped us win the Champions League last season, the Cup and of course La Liga. So most definitely he deserves to win the Ballon d'Or. He was also the Golden Boot winner last season in La Liga. This is actually insane. Mauro Icardi wins the Ballon d'Or. So first season of the Barca career mode, it was Leo Messi who won the Ballon d'Or. Second season, it was Leo Messi once again. And now it's Mauro Icardi. Fair play to him for winning this award. The draw for the Champions League is yet to be made. So we are going to be playing this one against Espanyol away from home. Catalan derby at the RCDE Stadium. And as you guys can see, because of fitness reasons, we've had to change the lineup quite a bit. Although a few superstars are still involved in this one. Artur, Coutinho, Koulibaly, Longley, Sestegen, Kimmich all start. But it's also fun to see Juan and Sua playing up front. Patrice Pino after scoring in the last episode, again getting a start in midfield. De Jong as well. So I've got a strong team for this one. Certainly better than the Espanyol side. Let's try and get all three points from this fixture and also get all the breaking rights. Inside to Insua. Quickly finds Coutinho. This is a chance for Artur Melo to score. And he misses from there. How's Artur missed that? That was perfect passing play between the team. And Artur somehow manages to miss that against... Espanyol in the Catalan derby, that is not acceptable from him. 
Now out wide to Joshua Kimmich. Finds Juan Insua, releases this one to Iñaki Williams. Now Felipe Coutinho should be an easy goal. Lays it off to Artur Melo. And Artur amends his mistake as he scores for Barcelona in the Catalan derby, making it 1-0. Again, the passing play for this goal was so good. Coutinho laying the ball off unselfishly for Artur. And Barcelona lead 1-0, courtesy of a goal from Artur Melo. Oh, here we go. Iñaki Williams may be through. Put in a fantastic cross, but what? Why did Coutinho just leave that? He was onside. What's going on here? But Coutinho does so well there. What a chance for him to score. And Roberto makes the save. But honestly, we should have made it 2-0 there. Coutinho wasted a golden chance to score. Coutinho putting this one in once again. Iñaki Williams kind of tripped someone there. And that's probably the easiest header he's going to score for us. I mean... How did he get away with tripping a player and the referee didn't even call that a foul? But anyways, Barcelona lead 2-0 against, of course, their rivals, Espanyol. Take a look at that again. One of the Espanyol players just went down and I think that was the player intended to mark Iñaki Williams. That's a simple header for him. Coutinho with another assist. 2-0 Barcelona. Here's Iñaki Williams. Now on his right foot. Still Iñaki. Might be going for the finesse shot. That is a sensational effort from Iñaki Williams. That is one of the best... Finesse shots I've scored just because of the way the ball travelled. It was just perfect from Iñaki. 3-0 up against Espanyol. Couldn't have gone better. What a strike from the Spaniard. I'm not sure who played the ball into him, but most of the work here was done by Iñaki Williams. Cutting it inside, taking it wide, and then, of course, a beautiful finesse shot. Terrible goalkeeping, to be fair, but off the post and in. Barcelona lead 3-0 in the Catalan derby. Best possible Catalan derby for us, beating them 3-0 and embarrassing them at their home. Perfect from us. Iñaki Williams' brace gets us through. Um, I'm kind of disappointed Juan Insua didn't score or assist, but I thought he was pretty decent in this one. But most importantly, three points in the Catalan derby. So far, this episode has gone down really well in terms of gameplay. We are genuinely cruising in La Liga, 10 points after just 16 games, I mean that's an insane lead over Valencia, 13 points over Real Madrid, Athletic Club down in 4th position with 28 points, man we are having a great season in La Liga. But anyways guys, the draw for the Champions League round of 16 has been made and I'm excited to see who we'll be facing. As you guys can see up there, it is Spurs that we've drawn but I'm really excited to see the other draws as well. Barcelona will be facing Spurs in the Champions League round of 16 and take a look at some of the other games. So it's Barca, Spurs, Bayern, Roma, Dortmund, Madrid, United, Juventus. I mean, what are these games even? Lyon, Liverpool. Inter Milan PSG, Chelsea Leverkusen, Napoli City, those are some crazy fixtures. Champions League this season is going to be insane and I can't wait for the game against Spurs. We've got ourselves one last game before the January transfer window, so let's just get done with this one. Barcelona at home to Hetafe, and because we had a weak scan between this game and the previous one, I can field my strongest 11 for this game, you know, from the players that are fit for this one. So Juan Miranda does start, but apart from that, it is a pretty solid 11. So let's get right into this one against Hetafe. Against Hetafe, I'm really looking to score maybe a few goals with Paolo. Here he is on the attack, goes for the shot. <laughs> It's, it's actually insane how good Dybala is. I was talking about how Dybala's finesse shots probably aren't as good as Leo Messi. By the end of the season, I might have to reconsider that statement because honestly, he scores from every finesse shot that I take with him. Like, literally. Like, just look at how easy he makes it look. You time it with Paolo Dybala and 9 times out of 10, it's gonna go into the back of the net. What a strike from the Argentine who scores yet another goal. Icardi... Might be able to cut this one back to Dybala. That's as easy as it can get for Paolo. He bags himself another goal. His second of the game. He's scoring goals for fun now in this series. And that's another assist for Mauro Icardi. Again, great football. And Barcelona lead 2-0 against Hetafe. Here's Dembele. Oh, that's brilliant from Usman. Here he goes on the attack. Tries to cut this one back. And Icardi with the header. Icardi in air is so, so good. He's so proficient with all these, you know, crosses coming in. And although the cross wasn't the best from Usman Dembele, Icardi made the most of it. Fair play to Usman for the run, though. It took a bit of a deflection, if I'm not wrong. And then Icardi leaps forward. Perfect header. No chance for their keeper. Another 3-0 scoreline. Seems like 3-0 is our favorite result, at least for this episode. Let's keep it going, guys. Icardi scores his 11th of the season. That's that. 3-0 against Hetafe. Solid result. Three points in the back. Very impressive performance once again from Paolo and also Icardi continues to fire for us 
Another game, another win. 3-0 against Hetafe. UEFA Team of the Year 2020 Defender shortlist. We've got Umtiti and Koulibaly in there, Marquinhos, and a player from Bayern Munich who I don't know. Okay, it's Sula, it's Niklas Sula, so that is interesting. January 13th is when the final lineup will be presented. Good to see we've got two Barcelona players in there. Okay, so we've got a Team of the Year 2020 shortlist for midfielders. Only one Barcelona player in there in Paul Pogba. I kind of expected to see Artur in there as well, so Cruz. Verratti, Pogba and Goretzka. That's interesting. A lot of Bayern Munich players in them, which means they're going to be really high rated if we do come up against them. And of course, the Champions League. We are now officially in the transfer window, which means next episode, it's time for us to do business and try and make signings to improve this team. 2021 in this series is here. So let me know where should we make improvements in this career mode. And apart from that, time for you guys to vote for your informed player of the episode. Nominee one and option one is Paolo Dybala. He was so, so effective in today's episode. Scored a shit ton of goals and overall... His play was awesome, so he is option one. Option two is Mauro Icardi. These two tend to get nominated a lot because they are just so, so good. So Icardi is option two. Make sure to click the i button on the top right of your screen to vote for either of them. We've made a bit of progress with our season goals. One more assist to add to Coutinho's tally, which means he is halfway through to completing that objective. I hope he can perform in the knockouts to help us complete that objective. The future is bright. I guess we'll be completing in the next episode. I'm really hoping either Juan Insua, Pino, or any one of those amazing players that we do have from the academy can get themselves a goal or an assist. Now, we've completed the Hatrick Heroes Challenge, which is great, but the replacing Messi Challenge might be difficult. But at least halfway through the season, Paolo is on 16 goals. So, yeah, that is fantastic progress. So, let's hope we'll be able to finish all of our season up. And there you go, guys. That should be it for today's video. Gameplay-wise, it's been perfect. I don't think we even conceded a single goal in today's video, which I think is fabulous. Next episode, hopefully we'll be able to bring in a few players in, make some great transfers and just enjoy this Barca career mode as we do come up against Real Sociedad in the Copa del Rey. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, smash that like button. 600 likes would be awesome. And if you're watching my content for the very first time, do subscribe for more FIFA 19 videos and I will see you guys next time.